Greetings, mortals, and welcome to a random tirade about vacuum cleaners. So I just picked up a vacuum cleaner. It's right over there. Sexy, sexy thing. And uh, I haven't had a vacuum cleaner in a long time, and picking up this vacuum cleaner has reminded me of uh, just how much my time is worth. And using the vacuum cleaner versus sweeping is a massive time difference as well as just doing the job better. Uh, the, the floor feels cleaner than it does when you've swept. Even if you sweep repeatedly, you don't get the same quality as you do out of uh, just vacuuming once. Uh, it's just a night and day difference and it's really huge. And uh, thinking about that has sort of led me to be sort of a bit introspective about sort of labor markets in general. Because um, the way that a vacuum cleaner works is that it takes labor and makes it go away. Um, a job that usually would take labor. So labor is defined as basically a person doing something. And um, instead of me doing something, this machine is doing it. Now, I'm involved. There's some labor involved, but the majority of the labor is actually being taken up by the machine. So what happens is that instead of spending, say, 10 or 20 minutes that, uh, sorry, instead of spending 10 or 20 minutes using a broom, with the same amount of, like, if you, well, you can't get the same quality. It's not possible because the vacuum cleaner just does a better job than the broom. But in order to complete a room, it takes maybe a third of the time and does the job twice as well, or three times as well. And th that's, that has interesting implications in our lives. So we, we've, for many, for a very long time now, we have been inventing technologies that improve the productivity of laborers. Um, but we have also been in inventing new technologies. So. A vacuum cleaner is an example of something that improves the efficiency of a uh, worker. And a Roomba is an example of something that replaces a worker. So a Roomba does the job of a worker without, you know, being one. There's no actual laborer involved at all. But from a fundamental standpoint, they're both basically the same thing. So um, one thing that we are running into is that um, all of the jobs that actually need to be done by people are going to require infinitely more um, work uh, in order to become, uh, what's the word, qualified for as time passes. As time passes, in order to be, for a human being to be qualified to do a job that only a human being can do, you know, economically, feasibly, right, because there's a lot of jobs that machines can do, but they don't do it cheaply. Um, right now, we're running into a problem where we there's a lot of talk about inc increasing the minimum wage. And uh, the difficulty with raising the minimum wage is that you aren't competing with other workers. You're competing with advancing technology. So a good example of that is uh, that in action is if you look at a supermarket and you look at self-checkout counters. Self-checkout counters dramatically reduce the labor intensity of the checkout process. Uh, for a standard checkout system, you have to have the customer there the entire time, basically, and you also have a person who's there you know, shuffling through all your stuff and putting it into bags and doing all that kind of stuff. And generally speaking, the customer doesn't have anything better to do. They're just standing around. So you're not really, you, the customer doesn't have any real benefit from this labor being done. Um, all you're doing, it's just sort of something that has to happen. But because you have to have this one-to-one -one ratio of laborers to customers, it results in a lot of problems. Anytime you have a, you know, a lot of customers coming through very quickly. Um, you end up with these ridiculous lines. Customers are waiting around. And it's just the whole thing is 
a nightmare. It, with a self-checkout counter, it is you have the ability to have substantially more of them. So, for instance, like a place that we usually go to, they replaced, I think, three or four checkout counters that were never in use anyway because they didn't have they didn't have eight people on staff doing checkout pretty much ever. So they were never using these things. And they replaced them with something like seven or I think it's I think it's either six or eight um, self checkout counters, replacing these two that were never used in, on the end. And the size of the lines in that store has gone from like literally through the aisles because I live in Singapore. The population density is ridiculous. So the lines that people have are huge because you have very little space and you've got all these people. So uh, there's hundreds of people in these grocery stores at any given time. So um, now there's no line. If you go through the self-checkout counter, you might have to work wait for one person, right? And if it's a really busy period, you might have to wait for two or three. But you're waiting for two or three people to go to any of these registers. It's not per register. That's a line for all of the self-checkouts as a combined total, as opposed to having these individual lines for individual lanes. And if you get in the wrong line and there's somebody in front of you who wants to use a bunch of coupons, then you're crying, right? So... The self-checkout counters fundamentally do the job better than a human being would do. They do it cheaper than a human being would do and are just amazing for both customers and for the company. They are not amazing for laborers. For low-skill laborers, not great because all of a sudden, instead of having one person per customer, you have, or sorry, you have to have, you know, a relatively large number of people to fill all these slots now all of a sudden they have one person working the counter there's like one or two counters open at any given time and then they have one or two people usually one just looking at all of the self-checkout counters and making sure that any customers that are having problems get those problems resolved any customers that are trying to steal shit you're you have someone there so you can see and confront them things like that so these self-checkout counters are basically great for everyone except for labor because there's nobody needed. You don't need anyone to do that labor. And that creates a problem with our, frankly, labor-obsessed uh, culture, um, certainly in the United States and in a large number of places. Uh, we have this sort of labor-obsessed culture where it's like, oh, we need more jobs. Jobs are important. We need to be competing with China for low-skill bullshit jobs that it's like you can't compete with China. Why would you want to? You want to pay people pennies on the dollar to compete with China? Why would an American be competing with some guy out in the boondocks? Because we're not talking about places like major cities where people are wealthy. We're talking about, you know, competing with these these uh what's the word? these factories and things where the the, the work, they have to put in suicide nets that is a literal thing they're putting nets on the sides of these buildings to prevent their their workers from jumping off and killing themselves because their lives are so poor and miserable you want to try and compete with that economically no you can't and you shouldn't that's not how it should be working. You do not want Americans to be living the lifestyle of, you know, a, basically, you know, a peasant in China. And that is the term that people here use in Singapore, right? Like when people talk about like people in rural areas of China, they refer to them as peasants, which is not a word that I have ever heard used to refer to anyone until I came here. And it's kind of crazy. So I assume it's I assume it's you know a translation of uh, whatever Chinese word they use, and it's probably not a direct translation to peasant, but the concept is similar. And 
Uh, they usually don't use that to refer to industrial laborers. Technically, they're using that to refer to subsistence farmers, generally speaking, but that's beside the point. Uh, they're the same group of people. It's just that, you know, when you get a factory in the general region, that's when people start to congregate there. But we have to make decisions about this kind of stuff because when you are looking at the economics of this kind of stuff, we, we've, we're talking about increasing the minimum, minimum wage. And increasing the minimum wage is an interesting problem because it's not good for the labor market to increase minimum wage. And it's easy for people to say, oh, well, you know, the businesses are making enough money that they can afford to pay laborers more. And that is 100% true. But the businesses are trying to make the maximum amount of profit. And what happens is laborers are not competing with other laborers anymore. They're competing with machines. And machines have preset costs. And as soon as a laborer costs more than hiring a machine or building machine to replace that laborer, you're just going to build the machine to replace the laborer. And the problem with that is that building the machine to replace the laborer is going to, the machine is probably going to do the job better and the customer is going to be happy. It's going to increase customer satisfaction and decrease cost if you increase the cost of labor too much. And that's a big problem if you're obsessed with labor. So as a species, one of the things that we need to decide as we increase the efficiency of things continuously, and it requires so much education and so much to become economically viable where you could actually meaningfully impact the economy, um, like do a job that you know you can't just automate, for instance, um, we have to decide, do we want to be obsessed with labor? Do we want to pay someone to do a job that a machine can do better? Do we want that? Because we can do that if we want, and we have done it to a large extent. We have protected jobs against the influx of basically just superior technological options. That is a thing that has happened. It happens usually on a local level. And we have a lot of that kind of stuff happening. But is that how we want to proceed with this? Is Do we want to continue to be obsessed with this idea of everybody working for their bread? Or do we want to start looking into just paying people to exist? That You know, it's... It's not great economically to pay people to exist because it disinclines people from working, to be sure. But a lot of people who are working and actually doing relevant stuff are doing it because they enjoy doing it and they love to do it. Not everyone by any stretch of the imagination, but a decent portion. So you, you have to incentivize labor, but at the same time, we're reaching the point where mandating labor requiring labor in order for you to just exist as a human is becoming less and less economically viable because the minimum wage thing is going to be a serious issue moving forward because the costs of automating labor are shrinking and the costs of hiring labor are increasing. And at a certain point, those two are going to meet in the middle and labor is going to cease to be economically viable. Once we reach that point, and we've already reached that point in a lot of industries, but once we've reached that point, what do we do with all those laborers? Do we just tell them that they you know, need to find new jobs? What happens when we don't need anything that they can supply? And you know, it's easy to say, oh, just educate them people more, you know, throw more education at people. Look, we don't need every single human being to have a doctorate in order for humanity to get the maximal benefits out of people with doctorates, right? Like you don't need everyone to be constantly being educated in order to, you know, get good results. You just don't, not everyone needs to be that heavily educated. It's great for people to be that heavily educated. But do, do we really want to mandate it? And, you know, it's anyway, so that's 
that's just my thinking is that we're we're very, very fast approaching the point where labor is going to be getting to 100 percent employment is becoming less and less economically viable and at some point in the future we're going to have to seriously address whether we want to continue with an economically unviable strategy that is just obsessed with labor or whether we want to just start acting like switzerland and give people money as long as they're around so anyway, that's my that's my thinking um i this is what happens when i vacuum floors as i get all sorts of philosophical so thank you everyone for watching i hope this was a coherent video and uh if you have any thoughts put them in the comments um and try to keep those coherent as well bye